Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. Um, we're on a roll with a certain tr line of thinking and uh, going to keep going with it. And so this is from Mortal Kombat. And this is the uh, sorcerer, Shang Tsung, whose fav famous line is, Your soul is mine. Your soul is mine. And then he sucks like the light force and the being out of the defeated fighter and takes their soul. Is it possible that anything could take your soul? Oh, do you guys remember this? Uh, fun days, fun days, fun days. So let's talk about, about Karl Marx. Yes, did you know? Literally. Cousins. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it's deep. Karl Marx, the, the founder of communism? Yes. And do you know that, like, birth name wise, Mordecai Levy? Levy, by the way, as Sergio is pointing out here, Levy is, Levy is the name of the tribe that wrote the Torah. And we were just talking about the Talmud, which is commentary on the Torah. Um, yeah, it, it's you can't make this up. Uh, cousins with the, with the Red Shields? Mm-hmm. Oh, there's more to it than that. I mean, it's such a intricate, tangled web. So when you see the book of Leviticus, <laughs> that literally is the book of Levi, uh, you know, it's the Levites. Who are the Levites? Well, those those are... The people designated basically um, to take care of a certain aspect of business. Business. Yeah, literally. M business. Well, communism, capitalism, these are all about business, aren't they? These, these uh, philosophies have a lot to do with economy and, you know, the monetary system. So you have Heinrich Marx, born Herschel Halevi, German lawyer and father, a uh, German lawyer who fathered the communist philosopher Karl Marx, as well as seven other children. The son of a rabbi, Marx Levy Mordecai Ben Samuel Ha Levy of Rotelheim. When you look at this, it turns out <laughs> it could it possibly be a coincidence that they're all related when we look at the the red shields who control so much of the monetary system have been the power behind the puppets that are the kings queens and royalty the real power behind it and nowadays prime ministers and presidents it's the monetary system, you know, as that quote was attributed. I, I don't care what puppets upon the throne. I control the money. I control everything. Well, you know, this is a tangled, tangled web. How, how did we get to this point where you have somebody that was born into uh, the tribe of Le Le Levi uh, and the Levites again? Ultimately, when you when you follow it all the way back, you go back to Leviticus. God tells the Israelites and their priests, Aaron and his sons, how to make offerings in the tabernacle, how to conduct themselves when camped around the holy tent sanctuary. Leviticus takes place during the month to month and a half uh, between the completion of the t uh, tabernacle and the Israelites' departure from Sinai, the instruction of the Le Leviticus emphasizes ritual, legal, and moral practices rather than beliefs. Yeah, and this is what you find. It, it's not really about beliefs. It, it's about a control system. The more you go into it, you realize the five books of the Torah is about, it's about lineage, but it's about control systems. And this is really what you, what you have going on when you look at these people, um, you know, born into what we would call a Jewish family, but born Christian and supposedly goes through, you know, deep dives, studying under the Jesuits and then studying the Talmud. 
and then you know having these revelations that everybody needs to be equal so let's make communism for for the average person out there i'm on your side even though i come from the elite of the elite even though i come from uh the insiders insider family don't worry about my cousins the red shields over there i'm out there for you yes it's all for you <laughs> i'm here to protect you i'm here to serve you oh look what i'm doing oh wow look at me um you know what i noticed looking at the the talmud is uh the the rituals and the way things are outlined and the way things are done there is a severe analness about it and if it's not done a certain way or if there's not a certain amount of people at a certain time if they're not lined up a certain way if they're not circled a certain way um if there is not this exactness about it well then god can get very angry and god probably will get very angry and there's going to be punishment and that's what that's what i saw just you know flipping through the talmud <laughs> it's just you know and and and, and god is going to punish this and god is going to punish that and you know if you see somebody doing this you can you you know that they are not dedicated to god and if i could just um take the word god and and cross it out and put alien entity i would probably actually be happy because then at least there's some truth absolutely it's never been about the creator of this universe there's nothing in, in there that's about the creator of this universe it's it's about the conqueror the master that master slave relationship and so isaiah berlin writes of heinrich marx that he believed that man is by nature both good and rational and that all that is needed to ensure the triumph of these qualities is the removal of artificial obstacles from the path they were disappearing already and disappearing fast, and the time was rapidly approaching when the last citadels of reaction, the Catholic Church, and the feudal nobility would melt away before the irresistible march of reason. Born a Jew, a citizen of inferior legal and social status, he had attained to equality with his more enlightened neighbors, had earned their respect as a human being, and had become assimilated into what appeared to him as their moral and rational, uh, dignified mode of life passionate prussian prussia doesn't really exist anymore but it was a great nation it was a great empire the prussian empire a patriot <clears throat> and a monarchist that word patriot just means somebody that is zealous uh patriotism uh, is is your your modern day zealotry and that just means people that are so into a cause that they're blind and they don't understand that they're being manipulated and this is the reality it painful as it may be so he educated his family as liberal lutheran christians and you know it's fascinating to to watch this when you look at this as quoted portrait of evil talking about karl marx a discipline of a disciple of hell on earth you know again studied with the jesuits then studied the talmud became obsessed with um, maybe the traditional line of thinking that there is a chosen people that's supposed to rule over uh, all others. Literally, when you look to, you know, when you look to it, what does the Torah say? It says that you are the chosen people of this one, as Cindy would say, alien entity. Now that, that part's true in, in that these, these are the people again which are destined according to the plans of this one particular alien entity to rule over the planet in a very very physical way in a how uh it, in a uh, now time frame it's not about it's never been about the afterlife that's the thing why a, a great question that theologians have have proposed is why in the world is there really no mention of the afterlife in the first five books of Moses? Because it's nothing about the afterlife. It has nothing to do with it. And it's all about here and now. That's the big reality. It, 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 it's not what we would really think of as a religion. It's a system. It, it's simply a system. 
in which one can realize the greatest amount of, of power, prestige, wealth, and basically all the, the things that the system offers nowadays as a tempting factor to see who they can get that will put themselves up on the pedestal while stepping on, on the faces, the feet, the backs of others. And so when you look at this, it's just another system. They, they realize the need to create apparently conflicting systems such as capitalism and communism. This It's really two sides of the same coin, and coin is what it's all about. It's about the economic system. It's about controlling people uh, through the monetary debt slavery system. Yeah, and, and you know, they've done really well, and they've brought it down to an art, and I think that's why... Uh, when it comes to dogma uh, and it comes to processes and procedures, it's like Mike and I have this adversity to it. We, we, we are repelled by it. Like, you know, like if you get two magnets, put them close together, they're going to repel each other. And I think it's because of that, I'll call it the a <laughs> anal nature of things. Like you so let's say you're studying this thing and you absolutely have to do something this way and this is the only way you can do it and this is the only way it's effective. Well, to me, that just stems from this bigger egoic type of entity and how they teach and it has nothing to do with honoring our individuality and how we feel that things need to be done based on our individuality. It's like taking that individualness and throwing it in the trash or it's taking that individuality and it's giving it to another entity to feed on. Absolutely. The world is now, at least for the most part, this is, by the way, written in 1869, at the disposal of Marx on the one hand and of Rothschild on the other. It may seem strange. What can there be in common between socialism and a leading bank? The point is authoritarian socialism, Marxist communism, either way, it demands a strong centralization of the state in which, again, the masses are controlled by the few. When there's centralization of the state, there must necessarily be a central bank. Where such a bank exists, then again, the few can be controlling the many. And this is exactly what we see in, you know, the Hague Con Congress, the Hague, 1872, 1871, you had... Um, Again, uh, that famous statement, there's going to be three world wars. There's also going to be the restoration of the Jews to Israel, not by the creator of the universe. Um, you know, by the dictates of uh, <laughs> this alien authority through the implementation of very human uh, political goals and planning. And, you know, again, ultimately, the Rothschilds and the UN uh, bringing that about. League of Nations before the UN, you know, having a part in all that as well. This is all, you know, again, to give somebody something to believe in. So for those that felt oppressed, and you have Karl Marx saying, hey, let's have equality, guys. <laughs> the only thing is, you know, I'm going to be part of that upper class, and there's going to be this upper class, which, of course, uh, organizes structures and rules and watch over everything. Yeah, and, and it's, it's no different. It, it's the same system, ultimately. It's just what flavor do you want? You know, <laughs> do you want vanilla or chocolate? Maybe you want tutti frutti. I don't know. Ask, well, I'll, I'll stop right there before I get in trouble. Anyway, when you look at it, these are cousins. This is all again. It, it's part of the same system because we've talked about all the presidents being related. Obviously, all the royals were related in Europe. And again, the European colonialism is really nothing other than the expansion of this Martian system, wiping out the vestiges of where there were still um, what you might call Tartarian um, situations of rule and, and actual freedom upon the planet. It, this has been all about wiping out the indigenous belief systems and way of doing things in harmony with the planet and installing that more Martian god of war again, you know, they even do things like Lamb of God, Lamb, Ram, Aries, Mars. It, it's it's clues, but that people don't even see. 
as many times as they've said things like Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, uh, saying things by rote and not even under <laughs> under the slightest inclination that this is all a control system which is indoctrinating them into belief sets that will enable them to manifest their goal of complete and other control um, for millennia upon the earth. It is just not nice, you know. I mean, the way the way I look at things and the way I, I do my best, I, I try to treat people exactly the way I want to be treated. I try to treat people with the compassion um, that I would appreciate. If somebody's having a really bad day, I, I remember when I have a really bad day and how would I want to be treated on that bad day. And and uh, to me, that that is the law of the land. It's that symbiotic nature it's not this parasitic entity that overtakes any and all other forms of life to utilize to however it wants to that, that it's just it's not the way it, it's it's not how things should be i feel it in my soul it's not a belief it's something i feel in my soul it's like something i would carry my whole being and try to walk and and live that way because that's what I feel. That's that's what I carry. That's what um, that's what grows within me. And the use of military force again by paying for it. And you know, here again, we have so many people that will literally say, "What can I do? The only option for me is to join the military, or I got to stay in the military because you know there's no other opportunities out there." And then you have soldiers for hire, which literally they're paid killers. And that's if you if you are a contractor, you're a paid killer. It's just it is what it is. Sorry to offend you, but that's the reality. And that term H O L O cost was first used in 1856. There, um, you know, again, what what happened in Russia, and I feel very bad for Russia, but it's just some symbolic for what's happened on the earth for a long period of time it, it really was non-stop wars going on for like a hundred years and you know again uh, we could look to the maps of tartary and and it's over in what they will acknowledge openly as the russian area even though it's really a worldwide um system that was in place so you know born lutheran you know what is it are you are you a lutheran are you now an atheistic communist um or are you truly you know coming from the jewish mindset but what is the jewish mindset too because again there's different branches you have conservative and and you go into ultra orthodox you know there's so many different flavors it, it's all a matter of really trying to find something that resonates with the person is what they're trying to doing to do and at the same time what we would do naturally is what resonates with you which again it it won't necessarily be the same thing as you as you grow and expand your mind it, i think it truly could be stated um that when you look at spirituality can you truly be spiritually minded if you have a dogmatic approach to religion i i don't think so i think those two things are in opposition to each other so if you are you know in a dogmatic mindset when it comes to religion i i don't think it's possible to be spiritual what are your thoughts on that i'd love to hear everybody's comments as we again look at this you know again ben means son of so you can see uh, a lot of names have changed over time and you know i do think that gil bates uh, guy you know his, his his last name's really not uh bates and it's not a guh eights either um it, it's it's this is what we've we've seen names change names are always changing to hide uh who where they come from in a sense in order to give the illusion that they're bringing something new interesting too again as we, we we talk about all these things in 23 and me why do they have a separate category again for ashkenazi um of which you know this is another person with that that lineage the ashkenazi um so christian family secretly kept their jewish faith um again we're told the persecutions but but what is the reality because again you know the victors write the history 
Uh, you know, this is a much more muddled affair than most people would believe, and yet it's pretty simple because I don't think really, like we had talked about um, 45, is he really Christian? I don't think any of them are. None of them are. This is just what they sell you. Yeah, they're, they're not Christian. They're, they're not Muslims. And, you know, the reality in, in Judaism, it, it, if it's not about the afterlife, again, it, it's just about the here and now. So what is this really all about? This is just useful tools to, again, create dogma and division. You know, I was uh, with someone at, at one point. I had a friend in my life who was um, very kind and they were helpful and, you know, just a good person. And as soon as I had mentioned to them that I, I realized that religion is only a thing to control the masses it's like they became white as a ghost it's like their whole face just went white and they took this really deep breath like oh god we've lost control and they knew that i was going to go down another path and they were very very angry about that and you know in doing what they thought was right going around calling other people and saying okay well we got to reel this one back in because she slipped away <laughs> you know and then people being very angry at me and people uh, pushing me out of of the family and certain family members totally turning their back on me because i acknowledge that the religion is nothing more than to control the masses and i wanted to follow me and and that was that was a huge sin and that was something that was very difficult for me to overcome because at the time i only had myself but i couldn't go back because the feeling was so strong and every time i heard a quote out of the bible or anywhere i i seriously was getting sick and then realizing that everything in the bible you know it's all made up of these darker rituals and it's it's the need and the desire to control people and it's that they will say anything and everything they need to say to gain control and even if that is nice things just to reel people in that are nice well once they got you they got you now you're under control now even if you're nice you're prone to do dark things because you don't know any better because you think you're doing the right thing because you have a good heart and that's what breaks my heart is so many people out there of of a really good stature and really good people and really good morals being taken over by a very 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 dark system absolutely you know and when you look at this you might say well what a good job this young lady has done in training the bunny to go on the course that's exactly what they've done to us. They, they've trained you to stay on the course. Don't you dare go off that course. And this is exactly what the system does. And the system is okay with people exposing um, maybe that the medical system hasn't been too, um, too helpful in some things. As long as you keep pushing, um, you know, either the Christian, the Islamic standpoint, any of these main uh, constructs of the reality that keeps you on that course and not venturing and wondering what is there off on the side there who's really watching me what is the big purpose in this as long as you don't look off those those tangents that really expose the system for what it is they'll reward you as long as you you know stay on track in one way or another of their constructs they need it they feed off of it it's a parasitic type of energy and the quicker we can identify that and uh, move away from it I think literally the healthier our soul is going to be the reality is you know again we are eternal consciousness having a human experience but there is a darker side to all this and that is the fact that when we look at beings like Karl Marx and so many of these other ones they don't go the normal route that other souls go uh, when you leave the body. They seem to be stuck in a darkness. They seem to be absorbed not back into the original uh, creator and the original plan for all of us, which is our own uh, means and method of exploring all that there is from every possible angle. 
multiple different perspectives, not just one, they seem to be stuck in blackness. And so it really is a battle for your soul. I, I know when I look at Karl Marx, I thought it was interesting because I didn't see anything. In, in his living days, when he was in body, he did have a very uh, strong energy. But since he's out of body, that energy is just, it's just simply gone. It, it's just simply dark. It's like it's been absorbed into this other energy that wants control. And people are willingly giving themselves to it. And... Uh, it's just disturbing as always guys we thank you for your support please do share this and and other videos like it and you know again we can't do it without you guys much love source bless and namaste namaste